26th Mayapur Vrindavan festival and was initiated by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Deir. He received sannyas initiation in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil in 1982. Since then, Maharaj's contribution in ISKCON has been in administrative services and also distributing BBT publications beginning in 1975 in USA and then 1976 to 1978 in Central America. He became the temple president of Costa Rica temple in 1978. And then he began traveling around Latin America, developing new temples, places of worship, and also collaborating in diverse administrative services in ISKCON. In 1987, he became a member of the GBC with zonal assignments in the Tucson area of Arizona and Mexico. He's also the co-zonal secretary for El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Panama, Belize, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Colombia, Trinidad, Tobago, and Venezuela. And his basic interest is in the essential role that actually communication plays in devotees' lives. So he wants to travel around and he wants to contribute in this area, how relationships amongst devotees can be improved by honest and clear communication with each other. And we are very happy. Maharaj was here some months back and again he is here. He's agreed to give us his valuable time. So we are very grateful to Maharaj for coming here and sharing his wisdom with all of us. Thank you so much, Maharaj. We'll welcome His Holiness Guru Prasad Swami Maharaj in our traditional style by loudly chanting with our hearts. Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Chana Vallabha Gire Varadhari Gopi Chana Vallabha Gire Varadhari Yashoda Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravana Chahari Yamuna Tira Vana Chari Jai Radha Mahadava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Mahadava Kunja Bihari Gopi Chana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nandana Vraja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana 
Yashodanandanavajajanaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jai Radha Mahadava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Mahadava Kunjabi Hari Chayam Vishnubhata Paramahanta Bhribhasa Kacchari Ashto Tarashtati Shishimad Abhaya Chara Naravinda Bhakti Vedanta Swami Bharashita Prabhupada Ki Chayanita Lila Pravishnu Vishnubhata Ashto Tarashtati Shishimad Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Bharata Kur Prabhupada Ki Ananta Kurti Bhaisnava Bhinti Ki Namacharya Shila Haridat Thakur Ki Prem Sikho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nita Ananda Shri Advaita Garadha Shri Vasari Gauda Bhakta Vindiki Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Kapinath Samakunda Radha Kunda Giri Gopadhan Ki Vrindavan Dham Ki Mathura Dham Ki Navadit Dham Ki Mayapur Dham Ki Chakanath Puri Dham Ki Ganga Mai Ki Yamuna Mai Ki Tosri Devi Ki Bhakti Devi Ki Samabitta Bhakta Vindiki Shri Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Prihat Midanga Ki Pitai Gaur Pavanandi All glory to the Assembly of Devotees All glory to the Assembly of Devotees All glory to the Assembly of Devotees Glory to Shri Guru Shri Gaurang Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevahaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So now that you've heard my upadis by the mercy of the Bhagavatam and Holy Name and the Vaishnavas, maybe I can overcome them. No. So today, reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 2nd Canto, 3rd Chapter, text number 24. Tadashmasanam hridayam batedam Radgri aman hai harinam adeyai Vikriye tatha yata bikaro Nitre jalam ghatra ruheshu harsha Tarashma saram vridayam batedam Yad griha man hai harinam adeyai Na vikriye tatha yadda bikaro Netre jalam ghatra ruheshu harsha Parashma saram vidayam vatedam Nagrihamana harinam ade Nagrihamana harinam ade jalam gatra ruheshu harsha Tadashma saram vidayam 
हरिनाम देया विक्रेतातव्याकारो नेत्रे जलम गात्रे सुहाषा स्मसारम हृदयाम बतेज गृह मान हरिनाम देय विकृते तात्तारो नृत्ये जलम गात्रेशु हर्षा राम हृदय बतेज विक्रियताकारो ते जल गातुहे सुहर्षा तट Ashmasaram is steel framed hridayam heart but the idam certainly that yat which grihmanai in spite of chanting hari nam the holy name of the lord Deyay, Deyay, by concentration, by concentration mind, of the mind, na, na does not, be create a, change, change ata, ata, thus, thus yada, yada, when, bikara, re, reaction, netre, in, in the eyes, chalam, tears. Gatra ruheshu at the pores, harsha eruptions of ecstasy. Translation and purport by Shila Pakupa. <clears throat> Certainly, that heart is steel framed, which, in spite of one's chanting the holy name of the Lord with concentration, does not change when ecstasy takes place. Tears fill the eyes, and the hairs stand on end. <clears throat> Everyone, can please repeat. Certainly, that heart is steel framed, which, in spite of one's chanting the holy name of the Lord with concentration, does not change when ecstasy takes place. Tears fill the eyes, and the hairs stand on end. Purport. We should note with profit that the first three chapters of the second canto. In the first three chapters of the second canto, a gradual process of development of devotional service is being presented. In the first chapter. the first step in devotional service for god consciousness by the process of hearing and chanting has been stressed and a gross conception of the personality of godhead in his universal form for beginners is recommended <clears throat> by such a gross conception of god through the material manifestations of his energy one is enabled to spiritualize the mind and the senses and gradually concentrate the mind upon lord vishnu the supreme who is present as the super soul in every heart and everywhere in every atom of the material universe <clears throat> om gyana timirandasya gananjana shalakaya chakshurum militam yena तस्मा श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनोभीष्टा स्थिता भूताल 
Swayam Rupa Kadahmahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Nama Om Vishnu Pataya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Kodavani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pastyatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sadi Gauda Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so this is a quite a long purport, so I'll take it by sections. Well, Srila Prabhupada is mentioning the gradual development up to the point of devotional service. Of course, the last few verses are considered to be in the negative. No. In the beginning, in the first chapter, etan nirvidyamana nam. Ichchatamakuto bayam yoginam ekanir nimam harinamanukirtanam. It was established that the, the best way to accomplish anything, because there were a few uh, condemnations you know, uh, in, the, in the beginning of the first chapter, and then is established chanting the holy name. But then it goes into a gradual process in the second part of the first chapter and the second chapter where, uh, as Srila Prabhupada mentions here, the gross conception of, of, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead to help those people, just like those who are very attached to yoga, meditation, the external process given nowadays, the externalization of Ashtanga Yoga, which is very popular nowadays. Most people don't get beyond uh, asana. They may do a little pranayam. Of course, with the air quality nowadays, you better have an air filter when you do pranayam. No? Otherwise, your pranayam will become, like here, you'll become steel-hearted and steel-lunged. No? Uh, by the wonderful air quality that modern society has provided us in the name of progress in technology. So, uh, but that's all these things that are considered to be so elevated in modern society, extra extracts from the real purpose of, of Krishna consciousness or of real yoga, bhakti yoga, is or buddhi yoga, as Krishna terms in Bhagavad Gita, are just uh, external. They're meant to bring the senses and the mind under control. Just like Srila Prabhupada emphasized so many times, the whole process of neti neti, or negation, is uh, for people who have no, uh, no ability to express themselves. The, the idea of silence you know, is if some, someone doesn't know how to glorify Krishna, then better to be silent. You know. And so all these things up to this point. You know. And in the last few verses, uh, of course in verse 22, there's a very wonderful lex uh, lesson for grihastas especially which is, it, it, uh, actually the standard that Srila Prabhupada puts as the ideal for a grihasta is more than we do in the temple worship. No. Otherwise, Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada's presentation, our parampara presentation, is meant for pure devotees. No. It's the ideal. It's something that we look forward to something that gives us hope and eagerness and the desire to advance your Krishna consciousness. If we brought our preaching down to the level of the conditioned state of most persons in Kali Yuga, although many don't want to admit it, 
no. Uh, how we're being pulled by the, I remember in, in the first edition of Bhagavad Gita, I don't know if they still have it, but they had this painting of someone climbing up the stairs to Radha Krishna, but then the senses and the mind are pulling them down. So this is our situation in Kali Yuga. No. So, uh, but we need that ideal. No. Even Srila Prabhupada's definition of the four regulative principles. No. It's an ideal because you're supposed to do it in the mind. It's not so difficult to do externally if you, if you have some, uh, some pious background. Not so difficult. But to do it in the mind. And what to speak of following Shikshastika in the mind. No? Nadana na jana na sundari. Jana. No? Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu na jana or uh, <clears throat> amanina. He mentions it twice in Shikshastika. It's so important because it's so much of a desire to be worshipped, to be renowned, to be uh, known. Uh, this, our, our ahankar is so great that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mentions two times, don't do this. But it's very difficult not to do it. And uh, uh, manadena, even more difficult to respect everyone. No. That's very difficult things to do. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada mentions, and then he he takes us to the platform of super soul. That once you go beyond the gross conception, otherwise seeing the universe, also Arjuna speaks about this in the 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Keshu, keshu, chabhaveshu. Please explain things in terms of worldly minded people. How can they see you? Oh, as the potency of a shark? No. Uh, when I was uh, younger, before joining Krishna Consciousness, I was swimming in the Bahamas, and I ran into a shark, a big shark. He was right there looking at me. No, luckily, he wasn't hungry or something, and uh, I got out very quickly. No. So I, at that time, I realized Krishna's potency without knowing who Krishna was. No. And you see beautiful big mountains, the Himalayas, uh, this is Krishna. We see the ocean here uh, with his beautiful b blue waters like they are here in, uh, in Chopati, you know, nice and blue, crystal clear. No. Then we think of Krishna. No. Actually, more, it reminds us more of Krishna's blackish color. No. And so, uh, all these things. And then we come to the platform of Paramatma. No. And then by chanting the holy name, which is the whole purpose of this verse, we come to the platform of Krishna consciousness. So continuing with Srila Prabhupada's purport, the system of Pancha Upasana recommended, recommending five mental attitudes for the common man is also enacted for the, this purpose, namely gradual development, worship of the superior, that may be in the form of fire, electricity, the sun, the mass of living entities, Lord Shiva, and at last, the impersonal super soul. Very interesting that Srila Prabhupada says, impersonal super soul. For a devotee, you know, one who is meditating on Radha Krishna, Radha Gopina, Radha Damodar, super soul is impersonal. Uh, everywhere, spread everywhere, within everyone, doing the same thing. And it mentions in this same canto a little farther on that uh, when one actually learns how to meditate on Krishna, then babam swanam babam sororuham, then Krishna enters, pravishtakanarandrena, enters into the ear and penetrates to the heart opens up the loving relationship, the lotus flower of our loving relationship, and there we will see Krishna. We won't see Paramatma, we will see Krishna. That is the gift of the holy name if we chant it properly, which we'll get into a little farther on. No. The partial representation of Lord Vishnu. They are all nicely described 
in the second chapter, but in the third chapter, further development is prescribed after one has actually reached the stage of Vishnu worship or pure devotional service. And the mature stage of Vishnu worship is suggested herein in relation to the change of heart. Now, before we go further, this, this verse is, the, the second part of the verse is sarcasm. Otherwise saying, if, if the ex if tears are, fall, are flowing from the eyes and the hairs are, have arisen in ecstasy, then why has, why has your consciousness, why has your heart not become softened? So if those things were happening, how could the heart not be softened? Therefore, as Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur points out, and we will see in Srila Prabhupada's purport, this is talking about pretenders. But when Srila Prabhupada speaks about this verse and, and uh, translates it in Shaitanin Charitamrita, he say, he's completely different translation. He says, if if the heart is steel framed because you're not concentrating on chanting the holy name, then there will be no tears in the eyes. There will be no ecstasy. None of these things will take place. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, when he speaks about this verse, he says that don't think that when there's a change of heart that these things will necessarily appear. In another place, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur also says that when one is an Uttam Adhikari, that uh, seeing Krishna does not mean that we will see Krishna standing with his flute. No. Or we, and even worse, for some people in their minds, they think, when I achieve that, I will see Krishna dancing. But Srila Prabhupada said, this is not the desire of devotee. We do not want Krishna to be a performer. No. Hey, Krishna, please dance for me. No. No. We want to think, hey Rad, hey Devi ke Chalalite, hey Nanda Sutta, Taha. We want to think, where is Krishna? Where is Radha? Where is Govardhan? Where is the Yamuna? No. This is the mood of separation. This is the mood established by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So here, we get into a deeper analysis of the verse. The whole process of spiritual culture is aimed at changing the heart of the living being in the matter of his eternal relation with the Supreme Lord as the subordinate servant, which is his eternal constitutional position. Gopi Bharatur, Pada Kamalayur, Dasa Dasa Anudasa. So. Uh, this is very important that uh, this is the purpose of Krishna consciousness. In the introduction to uh, Upadeshamrita, Srila Prabhupada uh, states in the, in, the, in the introduction that the, the purpose of Krishna consciousness is to develop the proper attitude. Otherwise, patram pushpam palam toyami, yo my bhakta prayachati. Krishna is interested in your bhakti. Not in, in, otherwise, what does Krishna need? Therefore, he minimizes it. Patram pushpam palam toyam, leaf, flower, water. No. These, anyone can do. Krishna is not interested in what you're offering, but what is the mood, what is the condition of your heart when you offer it? That is the uh, that is what Krishna wants. Otherwise, as Srila Prabhupada said, what is the use of your burnt chapati? Even if we take the most expert chapati maker in this room, or in all of Mumbai, or all of India, you know, outside of India, you won't find expert chapati makers like you find in India. But what is that compared to Shimati Radharani's chapati? You know, which will always be different and always be better. Every time she cooks for Krishna, it is better. It always is better. 
How can we even conceive of that? No. We try just to make it the same, at least, every time we cook, that our, our roller coaster ride of emotions and spiritual, you know, sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're sad, sometimes we're like this. Uh, we just hope that we can do the same, or maybe a little bit better, or maybe I become better, you know, over my lifetime. But who can cook every day? And every time you cook, even you cook the same thing, it will be better. No. So you can do that once you reach Goloka Vrindavan. But until then, uh, we just do the best we can. So, uh, so with the progress of devotional service, the reaction of change in the heart is exhibited by gradual detachment from the sense uh, from the sense of material enjoyment by a false sense of lording it over the world and an increase in the attitude of rendering loving service to the Lord. Bidhi bhakti, or regulated devotional service by the limbs of the body, namely the eyes, the ears, the nose, the hands, and the legs, as already explained heretofore, otherwise the last six verses. Oh. They were about that. Your hand, how to how to properly see the how to utilize the hands, the legs, the head. No, we don't want the head to be a turban rack. No, some place where you hang your turban or your or whatever you use on your head. No, but <clears throat> it is meant <clears throat> for bowing down to the Lord. When Manigriva and Nalakubara, when they were praying to the Lord. In the Puranas, it explains. Not in the Bhagavatam, it doesn't mention this, but in other Puranas, that one of their prayers, they said, "My dear Lord, previously we were like that. We were like this, head up, chest out, no, very proud. But now that we have seen you and received your mercy, chest in and head down, no, this is better position. Surrender it to the Lord." Put your lotus feet on my head, just as you did to Bali, Bali Maharaj. So, uh, now, it is now stressed herein in relation to the mind. Otherwise, the same sarcasm that was used. You know, uh, why are you proud of your breathing? The bellows, they're also breathing. You know, but you should breathe. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the second chapter of Madhya Lila, Mahaprabhu is speaking to <clears throat> Ramananda Rai and Swarup Damodar. And he says, now I will, I will uh, reveal my real position and you can judge. You know, what is the reality? I'm a pretender. I'm just pretending. All these ex exhibitions of uh, devotion, which you're seeing, it's just a, the a theatrical presentation. Why? Because I'm breathing. Because I'm breathing, it means I have no love for Krishna. If I really love Krishna, I will not be interested in maintaining this material body. No, because I'm interested in maintaining this body, it is just like a black spot on a white sheet. No, that even though I appear to be doing so many devotional activities, I'm simply interested in maintaining this material body. So, of course, we want to breathe because by breathing we can maintain the body and by maintaining the body we can serve Krishna. No. But this is the extreme ex uh, exhibition of uh, dainya, which, uh, which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was showing, especially in Gambira in Jagannath Puri. So now we there's there was some some sarcasm here. And the mind is the impetus for all the activities of the limbs of the body. It is expected by all means that by discharging regulate, regulated devotional service, one must manifest the change of heart. If there is no such change, then the heart must be considered steel-framed. 
no, ashasaram. Ashma really means stone, generally speaking. But because steel is even harder than stone, then that example is given, you know, the saram, the essence of the heart. The essence of the heart means the condition. What, uh, what is the condition of the soul within the heart? So, uh, for it is, it, is, it is not melted even when there is chanting of the holy name of the Lord. Uh, we must always remember that hearing and chanting are the basic principles of discharging devotional duties. And if they are properly performed, they will follow, there will follow the reactional ecstasy with signs of tears in the eyes and standing of the hairs on the body. These are natural consequences and are the preliminary symptoms of the bhava stage, which occurs before one reaches the perfectional stage of prema, love of Godhead. No. <clears throat> If the reaction does not take place, even after continuous hearing and chanting of the holy name of the Lord, it may be considered to be due to offenses only. This is the opinion of the Sandarbha. Jiva Goswami mentions this. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says the same thing. If one is chanting and hearing, and one is following these four regulated principles, and there is no change in the heart, uh, then, uh, then it is only due to offenses. It's not karma. No. It's not karma because if you're chanting the holy name uh, progressively, seriously, uh, regular in, in a regular uh, fashion, then it must be due to offenses. If these things are not happening, I read one devotee's... Uh, Vyas Puja offering to Srila Sea area, I, I have Trinidad. Prabhupada was originally going, going to come to Trinidad, not to the U.S. Actually, we discovered this because Chitsukananda Prabhu, my god brother, he was in Trinidad, and one man said, oh, I have some letters from your Swami. Oh? And he brought the letters. I have those letters. They're not in the folio. No. And... Uh, he said, yes, uh, he was writing to, to, I was the secretary of the Mahasabha, that's the big Hindu organization, and he was going to come here. I don't know why he didn't come. So then Chitsukhananda went to Prabhupada, said, Prabhupada, I was told that you were going to come to Trinidad. He said, yes, I was thinking there are so many Hindus there, I can establish myself and then I will, I will become popular and be easy to go to the U.S. No. Uh, he said, but they wanted to control me. And therefore, I did not want... I wanted to come to teach them about Krishna, not that they use me as their puppet. No. Uh, and so, and then Prabhupada said, actually, no one can control me. In another place, Prabhupada said, among my friends, I was always the leader. No one could control me. Only Krishna can control me. No one can control Krishna. Only Srimati Radharani. Of course, Krishna submits that all my devotees can control me. Therefore, in the fifth chapter, the demigods pray. They say, therefore, Krishna says, I can give you liberation very easily, but I will not give you pure bhakti. If you do devotional service, with the desire to have something, to gain something, then you can have it and you can have liberation. But I cannot give you pure devotional service because I will come under your control. And I don't want to become under your control so that you say, give me this, give me that, give me something else. How many people come here every day and say to Krishna, please, uh, they give their list, you know, here, here's my list. You know. Can you fulfill this, please? So we don't want that. <clears throat> so Jiva Goswami says, it's due to offenses only. Uh, 
in the beginning of chanting of the holy name of the Lord, if a devotee has not been very careful about e evading the ten kinds of offenses at the feet of the holy name, certainly the reaction of feelings of separation will not be visible by tears in the eyes and standing of the hair on end. Just like Queen Kunti says, Janmaishwara Shuta Shivir, Edamana Banapumam, Naivarhat Yabidhatum Bhai. This feeling, this loving feeling will not come if there is Janma Aishwara Shutta Shrivi, if we are bewildered by the feverish uh, reaction of, of thinking, oh, I come from a very good family. I come from a Brahmin family. No, I come from this aristocratic family. I have wealth. I have great learning. I have... <clears throat> Uh, I'm very attractive, or I have very wonderful qualities. If we think like that, no feelings will develop. Twam akinshana gochara, until you are akinshana. Uh, in relation to yesterday's verse, Prahlad Maharaj says, akinshana anam navrinute yadvat, that unless you take the pada, uh, Unless you take the dust of the lotus feet of the devotee on your head, no, no possibility. Unless we're situated in the parampara. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, not only do you receive the parampara, you have to become part of it. You must become guru. As soon as you join Krishna consciousness, the next day you must be guru. You must exhibit the type of behavior that will attract others to come to Krishna consciousness. At least that much. Even in your workplace, you should show the qualities of, uh, that are mentioned in Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. I experienced this when I, w I was in the army. It was a very miserable experience. You know, until I came to Krishna consciousness. And then... Everything changed and because uh, I tried to follow Bhagavad Gita as much as possible. And then the soldiers started asking me, why are you happy? This is miserable. I said, yes, I was also miserable. But then I got this Bhagavad Gita. Here, you should take one. You know, and that way I was able to distribute Bhagavad Gita. And everybody took Bhagavad Gita because they were feeling so miserable. So if we feel the compassion of seeing people out in the streets of Mumbai, Chopati, this whole area, anywhere, we see them, the greatest, uh, the greatest ex exhibition of misery is people trying to be happy in the material world. Because it guarantees you will suffer. If you're already suffering and you realize that I'm suffering, then there's some hope that you may take shelter of Krishna. But if you think life is meant for enjoying and you can't realize that you're suffering, you know, then there's no hope until... Therefore, Krishna gives, out of his extreme mercy, he gives more suffering. You know. And unfortunately, most people don't learn the lesson. So... Uh, <clears throat> The, the bhava stage is manifested by eight transcendental symptoms, namely inertness, perspiration, standing of the hairs on end, fault, uh, failing in the voice, trembling, paleness in the body, tears in the eyes, and finally trance. No. Uh, in the Nectar of Devotion, a summary study of Sri Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu explains those symptoms and vividly describes other transcendental developments, both in steady and accelerated manifestations. So just as far as these eight symptoms, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was speaking with Prakashananda Saraswati and the Mayavad Sinyasis, so he, uh, he mentioned at one point, after he said, he said, why are you associating with these fanatics like us? No chanting in the street and dancing, low class, 
They don't study Vedanta. What's wrong with them? Please come and study Vedanta. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that, no, uh, tumi murka tomara nahika vedanta dikar. My spiritual master said, you have no, you're a fool. You have no qualification for Vedanta. Krishna mantra japa sada, a mantra sar. Just chant this Krishna mantra. It is the essence of all mantras. Always chant it and you will be happy. Then he said, I began to chant. But then I went to my spiritual master and I, I objected. What have you given me? Now, every time I chant, I become like a madman. I, I cry, I dance wildly. No, what? I've lost all my composure. My knowledge, all, all that I've gained as Nimai Pandit has been lost. What have you done? And he smiled, Ishwara Puri smiled and said, my dear son, you have achieved what's just been, you have achieved these symptoms of transcendental ecstasy. You are very fortunate. Therefore, uh, this good fortune will be good for you and good for others. Take this chanting of the holy name and spread it to everyone. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, uh, he was very fortunate. And now we get uh, what Rupa Goswami has given, has given in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which was actually spoken by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, and then recorded by Rupa Goswami. Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has very critically discussed all these bhava displays in connection with some unscrupulous neophytes imitating the above symptoms for cheap appreciation. Not only Vishwanath Chakravarti, but also Sri Rupa Goswami treated them very critically. Sometimes all the above eight symptoms of ecstasy are imitated by mundane devotees, Prakrita Sahajya. But the pseudo symptoms are at once detected when one sees the pseudo-devotee addicted to so many forbidden things, even though decorated with the signs of a devotee, a person addicted to smoking, drinking, or Ill uh, illegitimate sex with women cannot have all of the above-mentioned ecstatic symptoms. <clears throat> but it is seen that sometimes these symptoms are willfully imitated and for that reason, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti accuses the imitators of being stone-hearted men. In 1976, Srila Prabhupada in Mayapur came before the deities, and one man came in, tears in his eyes, probably put some chili, you know, and started rolling on the ground in front of the deities. And Prabhupada went, and he took his cane and he went like this. And Brahmananda and another devotee picked him up and took him outside and Prabhupada smiled. No, so uh, Prabhupada was not very appreciative of these false demonstrations. No. Uh, yet sometimes they are sometimes affected by the reflection of such transcendental symptoms. Yet, if they still do not give up forbidden habits, then they are hopeless cases for transcendental realization. So, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur mentions that, but if they associate with the devotees, then they can change. But if they still are attached to being yogis or karmis, then the hook of devotional service will have the opposite effect, and it will be like a steel hook, like a fish hook. No, it will simply pull them away from the form of the transcendental form of the Lord. When Lord Chaitanya met Ramananda Rai of Kavaur on the bank of the Godavari, the Lord developed all these symptoms. But because of the presence of some non-devotee Brahmins, who were the attendants of the Rai, the Lord suppressed these symptoms. 
So sometimes they are not visible. Even in the body of, a, of the first class devotee for certain circumstantial reasons. So we saw this in Srila Prabhupada. In Vrindavan. Twice in Vrindavan, Srila Prabhupada was speaking on nectar of devotion. And he stopped. And there were some slight tears in his eyes. And like two, three minutes, then Prabhupada immediately stopped and became, took a very grave, uh, serious look. In Caracas, Venezuela, we have one devotee from Venezuela here. No. Uh, Prabhupada was chanting uh, <clears throat> that the, the, the song of Lochandas Thakur, Paramakaruna. Actually, they named, after this incident, the deities were named Paramakaruna Gornitai. Prabhupada was chanting, and his eyes filled with tears, his voice choked up, and he just stopped for a few minutes. Devotees didn't know what to do. So one devotee remembered having read that you should chant. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in ecstasy, the devotees chanted. The devotees started chanting, and Prabhupada uh, came back and gave the class. And also in U.S., in Atlanta, there was a big gathering of all the Sankirtan devotees. And Prabhupada, again, he spoke about Gornitai, and he went into ecstasy. But immediately Prabhupada would suppress it. Otherwise, everyone would be imitating him. So sometimes they are not visible, even in the body of a first-class devotee, for certain circumstantial reasons. Therefore, real steady bhava is definitely displayed in the matter of cessation of material desires, shanti, utilization of every moment in transcendental loving service of the Lord, abhyarata kalatvam, eagerness for glorifying the Lord constantly, namagana sada ruchi, attraction for living in the land of the Lord, prithishtad vasati stale, Complete detachment from material happiness, virakti, and pridelessness, manya shunyata. One who has developed all these transcendental qualities is really possessed of the bhava stage as distinguished from the stone-hearted imitator or mundane devotee. So these uh, nine symptoms of bhava were uh, revealed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sanatana Goswami. And then later they were recorded by Rupa Goswami and Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that Shantir Avyatta Kalatvam, these things happen uh, by increasing, increasingly. Shantir, first, a devotee becomes peaceful. Oh, uh, just like in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Apurvamanam achala pratishtam. That just as uh, <clears throat> samudram apa prapishanti uh, yadvat, just as unlimited quantities of water are flowing into the ocean, then uh, tavat tavat yam prapishanti sarve. Sashantim uh, apnuti nakamakami. In the heart of a devotee, so many influences will be coming from external uh, stimulation, but there is never an increase of desires, but a very peaceful condition. This is peace. And then, avyarta kalatvam, one does not want to waste one moment. I know when we were brahmacharis, uh, when we would go out on Sankirtan, we always had these cards. Now, now everybody has cell phones, but we had little cards with verses. And if if we were in the bus or waiting or you were on Sankirtan and there was nobody present, you'd immediately pull out a card and, and speak the verse. Never one minute you know, was wasted. We tried to do that. Of course, we wasted some time also uh, being conditioned souls. And then, Virakti, uh, virakti, one becomes detached, you know, just like Narada Muni ex exclaims, uh, Devarshi 
Utapnurinam Pitpurinam, that, O oh, great sages, O oh, demigods, O oh, relatives and friends, O oh, ordinary people and uh, forefathers, Nakinkaro Nayam Rini Charajan, I have no more duty or debt unto you. Why? Uh, Sarvatmanam ya sharanam sharanyam. Because I have completely, when one is has completely surrendered to the shelter of all shelters, uh, with the shelter, there are some shelters like Brahma uh, and Shiva, they are shelters for many people, but the shelter of them is Krishna. One we, once we shelter to Krishna, gotomakundam parihrityakartam, then uh, there is no more material activity. No. So this is virakti. No. There are many examples of virakti in the Bhagavatam. Bhakti uh, parishanu, parishanu, babo, virakti anyatra, chaishatrika ekakala. No. That when bhakti manifests, and then paraisha anubhava, and then there is, uh, one feels the heart filling up with perception of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bidakti uh, detachment. It is the same as pushti tushtik shud apayo nughasam, just like eating. First there's pleasure. Oh, tastes so good, if, if it's a good cook. Otherwise you may miss that part. No. Uh, just like when Srila Prabhupada went to Africa first time, they, his cook didn't have the proper visa, so the cook couldn't get in, and he went to the temple, and they told Navayogendra Maharaj, who wasn't, he was brahmachari at that time, they said, Prabhupada needs a cook, or he cooked, and then Prabhupada said, who has cooked this? No. And he came, Prabhupada, I did. And Prabhupada said, oh, you are so sincere that it tastes good. Otherwise, it didn't taste so good. He was an expert cook. But by his sincerity, no. But pushti, tushti, uh, uh, tushti, pushti. You get, first you get taste, and then you get nutrition. And then you, you're not hungry anymore. But Jiva Goswami says the difference is that by virakti from devotional service, you want more and more. There's, you're never satisfied. You're always satisfied and never satisfied at the same time. That is the transcendental position of devotional service. So, virakti, manashunyata. One becomes devoid of all pride. No. One becomes completely, just like Rahugana, he was so proud. But when he saw the elevated devotional position of Jud uh, Bharat, uh, he he became free from all pride by hearing from Jud Bharat. So, and then after that, Ashabandha, hope. There is hope, just like Nar uh, Naratam Dastur Thakur explains, Hari Hari Bipale, in his famous song. He says, "I have no qualification." The holy name Golokara Premadan Horinam Sankirtan has descended from the spiritual world. But Ratina Janmilo, I have no attraction. Rudaivam Idrishami Hajana Nanuraga. No. This holy name is so wonderful, I have no attraction. Then Dina Tina Jata Chilo Horiname Utardilo that Balaram, that Nityananda Chaitanya Mahaprabhu have come to give their mercy, the Tarasakshad, uh, Jagai Madai. And, but even Jagai Madai received it, but I have no attraction. Therefore, my dear Lord, please give me shelter at your reddish lotus feet because I have no other option. This is hope, Ashabandha, Samutkanta, eagerness, eager. Raghunath Das Goswami was so eager that his parents, his mother said, well, he wants to leave us, you should tie him up. But his father said, what's the use? 
He has the most beautiful wife in the whole region. And he's not even interested. He wants to go to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, let it, we should send him. But we'll send him with some money and some facilities. No. But he was so eager. Sanatana Goswami was so eager that he was put into prison. He was so eager to join Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was so eager that he was practically killed on the way because his servant, Ishan, had, had saved some gold coins, which he had already given to the prison guard. No. Oh, he was so eager. No. Uh, when he arrived, anyway, I won't go into the whole story. But uh, So these, these symptoms, Namagana, Sada, Ruchi, this is the turning point when we feel an intense desire to chant more and more and more. And then, after that, what happens after that? Then, uh, asakti tan kunakyane. Then we're very eager to hear about the transcendental qualities and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then, as it says here, the next step, pritistad uh, stale. Uh, we want to live in a holy place. Uh, like Mathura or Vrindavan. No. These are the symptoms that would develop when Baba, no, uh, Ijadayo, uh, 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 Nubhava Sur, when Baba is beginning to appear within the heart, Jatta Bhavan Kure Jane, the seed, the seed of sprouting devotional service will become strongly situated within the heart. So uh, this, is, this is what will happen. These are the symptoms. If you feel these things happening, but if you think, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm too busy, I don't have time to chant my rounds, then there will be no bhava. There will not even be a nartha nivritti but to speak of bhava. No. So these are things. So I'm sorry I'm taking a little long, but uh, this is such a wonderful purport. The whole process can be summarized as follows. The advanced devotee who chants the holy name of the Lord in a perfectly offenseless manner and is friendly to everyone. Now, this is very important. You know? If you're chanting properly, otherwise, manadena, you will see everyone as friend. You, know? you will see everyone as part of Krishna's family. It doesn't matter who it is. You know? Everyone will be so, just like Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur says, Vishwa Purnam Sukhayate. I can only see friendship and beauty within the universe. That's the only thing I can see. No. <clears throat> can actually relish the transcendental taste of glorifying the Lord. And as a result of such realization, and the result of such realization is reflected in the cessation of all material desires as mentioned above. The neophytes, due to their being in a lower stage of devotional service, are invariably envious, so much so, that they invent their own ways and means of devotional regulations without following the acharyas. This is very important. No. Otherwise, don't develop the, one of the most dangerous things in devotional service what I call the older devotee syndrome. No. Now I'm an older devotee. Now I don't have to offer obeisances to everyone. Raghunath Das Goswami offered obeisances to 2,000 Vaishnavas daily. No. Apart from being very humble, it's also a good exercise. No. So uh, can we do that? No. You might try to do it. Well, let, wait, I'll wait till there's 2,000 devotees and I'll do it one time. For a big festival, but no, we should we should be so humbly disposed, you know, that uh, we want to include everyone in Krishna's devotional service, and this is the impetus. So never become an older devotee. Always become a more, just like Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says, if anyone chants my name, all of their pious activities will be lost. This should be our mood, and it should increase as we become 
uh, advance the devotional service. Not now I'm an older devotee. Oh, just see, everyone's bowing down to me. They should listen to my lecture, and then they will become enlightened. Oh. <clears throat> we should never think like that. Just hear how, how I play the Madanga. Oh. Just see. Oh. Uh, so. Uh, <clears throat> so, this envious attitude. And then one will invent. Now we see this. Actually, I read an article. It says that, uh, what is the most popular religion in the world? Anyone know? The most popular religion. It's not Islam. It's not Hinduism. It's not Christianity. It's nowadays, whatever I feel. No. That's the most popular religion. Whatever I feel, that's the reality. As such, even if they make a show of constantly chanting the holy name of the Lord, they cannot relish the transcendental taste of the holy name. Therefore, the show of tears in the eyes, trembling, perspiration, or unconsciousness, etc., is condemned. They can, however, get in touch with a pure devotee of the Lord and rectify their bad habits. Otherwise, they shall continue to be stone-hearted and unfit for any treatment. It's very, <laughs> very severe what Srila Prabhupada is saying. A complete progressive march on the return path to home, back to Godhead, will depend on the instructions of the revealed scriptures directed by a realized devotee. So I will conclude with one point about association with the devotees. When King Nimi meant the Nava Yogendras, he said, Atya Atyantikam uh, Ninam, that uh, Prichchamo, uh, uh, yeah, Prichchamo Bhavato Naga, he said, Atta Atyantikam Shimam, that what great fortune have I received just being able to, uh, I want to inquire from you, O oh, sinless sages, no? Uh, Samsarishmin Shanardo P. This cycle of birth and death can be eliminated in one moment. No. Satsange Shivadir Ninam. By the association of devotees, it is the greatest treasure that one can possibly receive. No. So Srila Prabhupada says, if we get this great treasure, Tula Tulayaman Lavana P. Naswargam Napunar Babam. Bhagavat Sanghi Sangasya. If we get the association of a Bhagavat Sanghi, then in one moment, in one second, in one thirteenth fraction of a second, you can become a pure devotee. So one may say, what happened to me? I've, I've met so many pure devotees, and here I am, you know, uh, situated, firmly situated in material consciousness. What had happened to me? No. We have to take full advantage of that moment. Otherwise, you have to surrender. When you hear the instruction from the lips of the pure devotee, you have to surrender at that moment. No more material life. If you do that, in one second, you can become the topmost pure devotee. So, thank you all very much for your attention. Uh, probably no time for any question or comment? No. I don't know. It's up to you. I'm just a servant here. No. Uh, just, is there time for one or two questions, if they exist? Yes? Okay. Any question, comment? Maharaj Dandavat. If we are not getting association of devotees physically, what is the other way to get the association? I'm sorry, none? As, what do you do? You come and associate. <laughs> no? Thank you. And uh, again, if we see everyone, if we see everyone, just like it says here, as a friend, and we see ultimately that everyone is a Vaishnava, 
then even when we're associating with the devotees, you know, then uh, we will be happy and enlivened in Krishna consciousness. So, uh, just like Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, there are three, three types of consciousness. When we associate, this is all, of course, this comes from, uh, from the Upadeshamrita, that Krishnetta Yasya Kirita Manasadriyeta. When Rupa Goswami says, there are three types of consciousness. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, when you meet uh, Bhajana Vigyan, someone who is pure devotee, then you serve them. When you meet someone who is you're a contemporary, they're doing devotional service with you, you know, then you, you happily serve Krishna with them. And when you meet someone who is a novice to devotional service, you show compassion. You know. So in that way, in any circumstance, we will be able to think of Krishna. You know. Either we will take advantage of their association, uh, share the association, or give association. So never are we actually out of the association of devotees. Yes, Haribo. Thank you, Maharaj. The, the nectar is flowing from you, and we are very grateful. Uh, very wonderful points. Uh, at, at the ending, you said, Maharaj, that if we hear from a pure duty and understand the instructions, and there is a chance we can become pure, actually. So, uh, my challenge is, like, the duties are, pure duties are speaking, Prabhupada has given so many things, spiritual master is speaking, Vaishnava is speaking. How should I make myself qualified to actually understand the importance and then grasp it also? Because the things are, the Ganges is flowing, but you are not able to take it actually. Yes, we have to increase association and decrease distraction. You know? But as Srila Prabhupada says here, for most people, it doesn't happen in one thirteenth of a second. Gradual process. You know? Gradual process means that we understand we develop some humility in our heart and we understand that I am conditioned and therefore we accept Bhaiti Bhakti and we follow the process seriously you know, and we follow these regulative principles and we, we, uh, we hear and we chant as much as possible. And then the, the, the real reference to this is the 11th canto, 20th chapter, Text 27 and 28, uh, which say bas basically, if you can only realize that material desires will cause misery and that there's no benefit in them, but you still have those desires in your heart, don't be artificial and, and try to eliminate them artificially. But every time they appear, you, but you just continue to develop your, your faith by chanting, and you maintain a happy attitude of serving Krishna. And every time these material desires appear, you think, oh, there it is again. Let me try to uh, feel a little remorse. And then after about 3,000 or 5,000 times or more, you will actually transcend them. Otherwise, don't become, don't artificially try to be something that you're not. That's what it means by gradual development. But don't be so uh, non-artificial that you don't make any process, progress. No. So that's called gradual development. That we accept, I'm in the material world, I'm in the material atmosphere. Here comes the microphone. Oh. Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you. Uh, Maharaj, my question is, uh, uh, as we are staying in the outside world, we have to work, we have to spend eight hours, sometimes nine hours with outside people. And uh, probably there is no Krishna content there. It is just about how I can become famous or how I can earn more money or how all the materialistic way of enjoyment. So hardly we can remember Krishna and the, I mean, we get lot of affect, I mean, lo, I mean, a uh, lot of 
uh, we are affected by that association a lot. So how do we deal with such situations? Because we cannot give up because that is a source of income for us. We have to maintain ourselves, our family then. How do we take care of our Krishna consciousness in such situation? Okay. This question probably is one of the questions I get most in here, especially here in India. In the West, they don't even ask it. They just, uh, I mean, Maya, you know, but uh, at least that shows that everybody is trying. We should not see our work. Uh, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Yo uh, yoga kashaulyam, that the art of yoga is uh, ma manushmari yudya cha. That Mama uh, Anushmarya, I will always remember Krishna, then I will do my duty. So what does that mean? That means every day in the morning I carefully chant, I worship my deity. If, I, if I'm living, you know, I have my home, my apartment, my room, I have my deity, I worship my deity, I chant the holy name, I associate with the devotees whenever I can. Every day I do this. And therefore, when I go to work, my consciousness has been purified. And I will see this work as the possibility of having money to maintain my Krishna consciousness. No. Otherwise, uh, I'm not on the platform of uh, the Goswamis and living under a tree. No. I need a, uh, an apartment, a house, a roof over my head, no. at least a tent, at least that much. No. Uh, so I have to work. So therefore, this work is part of my bhakti. No, it's part of my, I see it that way. Just like if someone, if I work in an office, then, you know, I'm a normal person. I have a picture of my family. I'm remembering that I'm doing this for them. So I keep a picture of Krishna in my heart. And while I'm working, I always think I'm doing this for Krishna. I'm doing this for my family so that they can all have the possibility of being devotees. No. But if I sink into material consciousness, and therefore what do you do when you're working? You're remembering the holy name. No. That's why we have the holy name, because we have to work. Advaita Charya, Shivananda same, they were not working like us. No. They were Brahmins and they were simply uh, doing jagyas and no. But if you work with that consciousness, Krishna will change your life. And pretty soon, he will change everything so that the type of work you do will be more related to Krishna. But don't do it with that motive. Well, let me do this for a few months and then Krishna will make a change. No. He will do it when you're ready for the change. Therefore, when I'm working, I must think about Krishna. And therefore, to be able to think about Krishna, I must chant the holy name as prescribed here. No. Don't separate. Don't departmentalize your life. No. Okay, I have my sudden in the morning. No, that's my sudden department. Now I go to my work department. Then I go to my recreational department. I go walk on the beach. And then I go to my you know, family department. And then I go to my boga department, you know, enjoying life sit down, watch a movie, no, no. Uh, as Krishna says, Vyavasayot mika budhi ekeha kuru nandana bahu shakya yanandas cha. No, ekeha kuru nandana, there should only be one consciousness, everything is for Krishna, not departmentalized, bahu uh, shakya. No, I don't departmentalize my consciousness. Everything is included in Krishna consciousness. Don't think work is something different. It's all meant to serve Krishna. Hare Krishna. So I think we will stop here. Thank you all very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Please, Please excuse my long-windedness, but it's Prabhupada's fault because he made such a nectarian long purport. So we can blame Srila Prabhupada <laughs> for giving us too much nectar. No. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. We are grateful to you for giving such a 
nice class based on uh, sections of the purport. You completed the whole purport also and also spoke on the sections of the purport and also took so many questions. We are very grateful to you. Thank you so much. We will express our gratitude to Maharaj by loudly chanting three times. Hari Bo! Hari Hari Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Anantakoti Vaishnava Bindi Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Pemanandi